Hey guys and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be using pointers for something in a game and we're actually going to make a dialogue tree program. Now if you've ever played a game like Skyrim or, or an RPG game where you have a dialogue tree system, you know that the way it works is you have uh, basically a conversation with an NPC and you can choose different options uh, for your responses to what the NPC says and that will affect the outcome of the conversation. So what we have here is a dialogue tree graph and each of these red boxes is a dialogue node and each dialogue node is basically just uh, one step of the conversation. So as we can see up here at the top, this is the beginning. This is what's called the root node. We're going to start here, and he's going to say, Hello, brave warrior. So this is where the, uh, the conversation starts. Now we can choose one of these two responses right here. And whichever response we choose, we will follow the blue line to the next node. And this, this blue line is actually a pointer to the next node. So this is where we're going to be using pointers. Now if we choose sup noob, we're going to get to this little mini branch here, and the conversation is going to end because he doesn't like that kind of talk. So he's going to say, I don't want to talk to you. And then we have to choose the black uh, dialogue option, and whenever you have a black dialogue option, that's just going to end the conversation. So if we were to say, hello, strange voice, we're going to follow this dialogue tree, and then we can do another sub-branch right here if we ask him what the pay is for the quest that he offers us. And once we get to the bottom, he tells us the quest, which is to collect 10 dandelions, and we can either decline the quest and use this black uh, little text and we're going to basically just it in the conversation or we can choose this uh, cyan text right here and what that's going to do is basically make us accept the quest and what we're going to do is just like print out you accepted the quest or something we're not going to implement anything except the dialogue tree system and we're not going to implement it the best way that you could uh, typically what you're going to want to do is read your your dialogue trees from files uh, like an XML format or, or something better uh, what we're going to do is just hard code it just so you can get practice with the pointers. All we care about is making this tree with pointers. We're not going to worry about doing it the best way. Like you're probably not going to see this code in a video game. But of course you could use it if you want. Alright, so let's go to our tutorial videos solution. Now I went ahead and created a class called Dialogue Tree. And I gave it some uh, public methods here. I gave it a constructor that doesn't do anything. I gave it a void init. This is going to build the tree. Now remember, ideally, init is actually going to like load a dialog uh, tree from a file. But for us, we're just going to hard code it. We also have void destroy tree. Now what this function is going to do is it's going to basically delete all of our uh, heap memory that we allocate with new. Because remember, whenever we, cre we create an object on the heap with a new call, we have to remember to delete it all. So once we're done with the dialogue tree, once our conversation's over, we can call destroy tree if we want, and that's going to free up all that memory so we don't have memory leaks. Then we have the perform dialogue function. This is basically going to be the conversation function. It's going to start the conversation and, and do the whole conversation, and then it's going to return a value. It's either going to return a zero, meaning you didn't get a quest, or it's going to return a 1, meaning you did get a quest. Now, if this was a more complicated dialogue, we could return even more numbers. Like, maybe uh, not only could you get a quest, but you could get a bonus quest if you follow a certain dialogue tree, or maybe you can get some extra experience for following a certain dialogue tree or something like that. We could return a different code, but we're going to do it uh, really simple. So, we actually need to make some more classes. We need to make classes for the dialogue node and for each dialogue option. So let's start with the dialog node. Now we could make a new class file, or a, a new header and CPP file like we usually do, but instead, since these uh, classes are going to be really small and really only used right here, I'm just going to put them in this file. I'm just going to declare them right above the dialog tree class. So we're going to say class dialog node, like that. And let's go ahead and, oh, I like to do it like this. There we go. And let's go ahead and make its contents public so we can access it public and all right so what does a dialog node have so if we look at our little uh, graph thing here we have a green text box right this is going to be the text that the NPC says at this dialog node so let's go ahead and make that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make all of our uh, variables in this dialog node class I'm gonna make them all public since this dialog node really isn't gonna have any functions it's pretty much just going to be a class with variables in it that's pretty much all it is and dialog tree is really gonna be the only thing that uses it because of the, because of that I'm not gonna write getter setter functions I'm just gonna use the public variables because it's gonna be really simple and it's not like this is a really uh, heavily used class it's gonna be used all over our program so there's not a lot of risk involved with doing this 
So the public variables are going to be string text. So that's going to be the NPC text that he says. And then we also need uh, some options uh, right here, some options that we can choose. Uh, like, for instance, sup noob or hello strange voice. So I'm just going to have a vector of dialogue options, and that'll be the different options you can pick. Now, we don't know how many dialogue options there are, so that's why we need to use a vector, so we can uh, basically push back the dialogue uh, node with more options. So let's say vector, and now we're going to need a new class here. We're going to call it a dialogue option, which we haven't actually made it yet. And then we'll call it dialogue options. So let's go ahead and make this dialogue option class. So we're going to say class, class, dialogue option. We're going to make it right above it. Now it's going to have a bunch of public stuff as well because it's really simple. Now what does a dialogue option have? Well, it has some text, right? For instance, sup noob, that's some, some text. So we're going to say string text. And what else does it have? Well, it has a pointer to the next option, right? For instance, subnoob is going to point to this, uh, sorry, not the next option, the next node. So subnoob is going to point to this node. So we need a pointer to that node. You can think of pointers as little arrows that go from one direction to another. So we could actually draw it like this because a pointer goes in one direction. Okay, so let's make that pointer. It's gonna be a dialog node pointer star and it's gonna be next pointer or sorry, next node. There we go. So we have that, we have next node, we have text, and let's also uh, give it a code. Uh, let's give it a little integer code, because what we're gonna wanna do is, based on the response, we're gonna possibly want to return something. So for these, we're gonna wanna return zero, right? Because they uh, end the conversation. And for this cyan one right here, we're gonna return a one, because that's uh, the completion of the quest. So to do that, let's just add an int code, int code or return code, something like that. And this is only gonna get used if we return. So for instance, this hello strange voice isn't gonna really use its code because we're not returning, we're not quitting the conversation yet, but that's okay, we can, we can store that variable there anyways. All right, so now we have our string text in the dialog node, we have vector of dialog options, uh, we have our dialog option class, uh, one thing, we're probably going to get an error because uh, we have a pointer to a dialog node declared here, but remember, whenever we make functions and things, uh, for us to use this variable, it has to have already been declared. Otherwise, we're going to get an error saying you know, that dialog node is not declared uh, because dialog node is actually declared below uh, where we, we ask for a pointer right here. So once our program's coming along here, it's going to get here and be like, I don't know what a dialog node is. So all we got to do is do a forward declaration like we do with uh, functions. So we could say class class dialog node like that. So that's going to do a for declaration for this so that we don't get errors and now our pointer is going to work. All right, so let's go ahead and make the init function. Now our class dialog tree is going to need to actually uh, store the nodes somewhere. Uh, we're going to have to hold on to these nodes. So let's make a vector of nodes. So each time we add a node, we're going to add it to uh, this vector. So we're going to say vector dialog node, oops, dialog node, and I'm going to make it a vector of dialog node pointers. We're going to allocate these on the heap, and I'm going to call it dialog nodes, like that. So here's our vector of dialog nodes. This is going to be our tree. It's going to start out empty, and then we can add things to it in this init function. Oops. So let's go to the init function. Let's go to dialog tree. So here is dialog tree init. So what we're going to do in here is we are going to uh, make our uh, tree. And we're going to do it just one node at a time. So what we can do is make our nodes and push them back to the dialog, uh, dialog nodes vector. So let's make all five of the nodes. We're going to make a variable for each one. Now remember, this isn't the best way to do it. Ideally, we're going to read this from a file, so we're not going to have to make variables for each one. But we're just trying to get practice with pointers. So let's actually number these. So this is going to be one, this will be two, this will be three, this will be four, this will be five, like that. So let's go ahead and actually, uh, let's number these the correct way. This is zero, remember everything's zero index, zero, one, two, three, four, so we don't confuse ourselves. Oops, that's Seed of Andromeda, all right. So what we're going to do is make those. So dialog 
node, and it's going to be a pointer, and this is going to be node 0, and we're going to go ahead and initialize it on one line. So we're going to say node 0 equals new dialog node, like that. So that's going to allocate us a new dialog node on the heap. Then we can say dialog node star node 2 equals, or node 1 equals new dialog node, and so on. I'm just going to copy paste this and change the numbers. 3, 4, 5, or 2, 3, 4, excuse me, 2, 3, 4. All right, so now we have the dialog nodes. So what we need to do is actually uh, hook them up and, and add the actual uh, dialog options, so each of these things. So let's start with the first one. So what we should do is push back dialog options to the dialog node, and each dialog option is going to have these fields in it. So what I'm going to do to make this uh, easier so we can do it in one line of code is I'm going to give a constructor to the dialog option class. So I'm going to copy this right here to make our constructor, and we're going to pass in the variables that we need. Now remember, we can't say string text here like that because this is the same name as the, the uh, member variable, so I'm just going to capitalize these uh, parameters. And we have int return code and dialog node next, or dialog node star next node. So we're going to pass in all of these things to the constructor. So let me copy this and come down here to the top and here is our constructor for dialog option. And it's really simple. What it's going to do is it's just going to set its local or its uh, member variables. So we're going to say text equals text, return code equals return code, and next node equals next node. Make sure you're setting your member variables on the left side equal to the parameters on the right side. It, it would be really easy to accidentally say next node equals next node, which is setting it equal to itself, and that's going to be a bug. So make sure you've got uh, them capitalized the right way. Alright, so here's a constructor for a dialog option. Now, whenever we want to add a dialog option, so for instance, let's add this sup noob dialog option. Anytime you want to do that, you're just going to say node 0 and remember, since we have a pointer, we need to first get to what the pointer is pointing to because this is just a memory address. Node 0 is just a memory address. Once we say star, that's going to get the value that the memory address is uh, pointing to. And what we're going to do is wrap that in parentheses because we get an operator precedence issue. And now we can say dot dialog options, and we can access that public variable. And we can say dot pushback, because remember, whenever you want to add something to the variable, you just call pushback. Now, if we wanted to, we could make a dialog option on one line, like new option, and set its variables, and then pass in new option here. But remember, I showed you the trick where we can actually do it all on one line of code by just doing the dialog option here, and then it's, it's constructor parameters, and we're going to just pass them in here, uh, because we don't need to hold on to that intermediate variable. We just want to add a node here. We don't really care about naming it or sorry, we want to add an option here. We don't want to name it option 0, option 1, or anything like that. So we're going to push back a dialog option, and the constructor says we need text, return code, and next node. So the text for this one is hello, brave warrior. So hello, brave warrior. The return code is 0. That's going to be 0 for most of them. The only one that's not going to be 0 is let's do it here at the bottom because that's going to accept the quest. And the next uh, node is going to be what? It's going to be node 1, right? Because it's pointing to node 1. So next node equals node 1, like that. So that adds a dialog option. Now I want to show you a little shortcut to doing this. See how ugly this looks? We're taking our pointer, we're dereferencing it. Remember, this is the dereference operator, and then we're accessing the value. So this is just a memory address. Once you add the star, it becomes a dialog node, and then you can call dot. There's actually a shortcut. We can get rid of all this junk, and then instead of saying uh, that star pointer thing dot, we say node 0 arrow, and this is the exact same thing that we had before, it's just a little shortcut. It'll dereference it and then access uh, that little, um, the, the member variable dialog options. Alright, so let's add another uh, dialog option to our node, so dialog options dot pushback, 
And we can go ahead and just pretty much copy paste this stuff and just change the uh, stuff that we pass in. So I'm going to do that. And so this option is called Hello Strange Voice, and it's going to point to node 2. So this says Hello Strange Voice, and node 2 is the node it's pointing to. So we have constructed node 0. That's all there is to it. Now what we want to do is add node 0 to our list of all dialog nodes. So we're just going to call dialog node, oops, right here, dialog nodes dot pushback node 0. Now what's cool about this is because we uh, allocated this to a new dialog node and it's off in the heap somewhere, whenever we add the dialog node uh, pointer to dialog nodes, we don't have to like copy a whole dialog node. A pointer is on a 32-bit machine, it's 4 bytes. On a 64-bit machine, it might be 8 bytes. Whereas the dialog node class itself is much bigger than that. It's actually however many bytes this is. Uh, plus uh, four bytes here, plus four bytes here. So we're actually uh, saving uh, some, we're, we don't have to copy as much data when we just push back the pointer. Because remember, whenever we add a pointer to dialog nodes, it's pointing to this, right? This new dialog node that's on the heap somewhere. We can have as many pointers pointing to these dialog nodes as we want. We just want to make sure we don't lose all of our dialog uh, node pointers because then we won't be able to delete it. Because remember, we have to call delete on a node uh, or on a pointer. So for instance, see these five uh, node variables right here, node 0, node 1, node 2? Remember, these are variables that are allocated on the stack. So once this init function ends, this stack frame is going to pop off the stack, and all of these variables are going to go away. And if we lost all of these, if we weren't pushing back this to dialog nodes, then we would no longer have these node pointers at all, and we would never be able to call delete. So that memory would be there forever, and we would have a memory leak. However, if we keep track of the dialog nodes on this dialog node, node tree then we can delete it later and down here we can we can you know perform dialog on the tree all right so we push back that node now let's make node 1 so i'm just going to copy this and change it for node 1 so node 1 uh, dialog options dot pushback and this one is going to be all so a w w uh, a W W, and I actually did this wrong. I said "Hello, Brave Warrior" here. This dialog option is not "Hello, Brave Warrior." It's "Sup, Noob." Uh, so let's go ahead and say "Sup, Noob" here. Sorry if I confused you. We actually want the dialog node to have that text variable. Remember, so we're going to say "Node." zero arrow text equals hello brave warrior like that but we can do this in an even better way by just making a constructor for dialog node that does that so dialog node and we're going to pass in string text like that super simple really hope i didn't confuse you by messing up there we'll see all right and let's go ahead and do it up here dialog node colon colon dialog node and we're just going to say text equals text so now we're getting errors here because we're not using our constructor, right? Anytime you allocate a variable, you've got to use the constructor. So let's put our parentheses here so we can use the constructor. And what we're going to do is pass for node 0, hello, brave warrior, like that. There we go. And for node 1, it's I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. So this is the NPC text we're passing in for all of these. For node 2, it's I have a quest for you. I have I have a quest for you. For node 3, it's you will get 5 gold, you greedy swine. You will get 5 gold, you greedy swine. And for node 4, it is collect 10 dandelions. Yes. So remember, I told you wrong the first time. This is sup new because it's a dialog option that belongs to node 0 which is initialized with hello brave warrior okay so we added the dialog option to node 1 so now let's push it back like this so we'll push it back here and now let's go ahead and do node 2 so node 2 has several things so let's go ahead and just copy this to make it simple so node 2 is going to be node 2 and this dialog option is going to be to point to, let's go ahead and do the k by first. 
So k by. Now, we actually don't want to make this uh, pointer node 1, because then that implies that we are uh, drawing an arrow like this. But we don't want to do that. We don't want an arrow. So what we're going to do is set this equal to the null pointer, right? which is the same thing as null, same thing pretty much. We're going to set it to the null pointer, and that's going to signify to us that the conversation is over. And we should also be doing it here, because all is a black text, so it shouldn't be linking up to something else. That would have been a bug. Null pointer. All right. So node 1, node 2 are getting hooked up. See, it would be a lot easier to manage this if we were loading it from a file, because we could just write a generic function that loads it from the file, and it would be easier to avoid bugs like this. Okay, so that's node 2's first dialog option. There's going to be two more dialog options. So the first one is going to be, what is it? What is it? And it's going to point to node 4. And the next one is, what's the pay? And that's going to point to node 3. What's the pay? And node 3. There we go. So node 2 is done. So we'll go ahead and push it back to our vector of all nodes. Let's go ahead and label these. Node 0. Node 1. Node 2. It's good to have comments. Node 3. Node 3 is pretty simple. It's got two options. So I'm just going to copy these two change it to node 3, there we go, node 3, node 3. So the first option is, okay, what is it? Okay, what is it? And it's going to point to node 4. And the next option is, that sucks, I'm out. That sucks, I'm out. And that's going to point to nothing, because it's going to end the conversation. All right, so let's push back node 3. That's done. And then we only have one node left. Now, as you can see, if we had a really big dialog tree, this would be a big pain to do. So that's why this is not really the best uh, way to do this. But it's good for practicing pointers, and it works. So collect 10 dandelions has two options. The first is let's do it. The next is no way. So let's do it. Now, remember, this is the cyan text. This is the one that's going to accept the quest. This is node 4, 4, 4. So since this is accepting the quest, instead of a 0 for the return ID or the return code, we're going to make it a 1. And this is going to point to nothing, null pointer, because it ends the conversation. And uh, the other one was no thanks or something? No way. No way. And that's going to return 0 because you reject the quest. And we'll push back node 4 here. So make sure... Uh, you've got like node 4, node 4, node 4, node 3, node 3, node 3. Make sure you don't have any bugs because uh, it's hard to find bugs with pointers sometimes. And that's it. That sets up our tree. So our init function is done. Let's go ahead and call it from main. We need to make sure we include dialog tree.h so we can make a dialog tree class. So let's make a dialog tree. Dialog tree. Uh, dialog tree. Like that. So we're going to call dialog tree.init. That's going to initialize it. That will build the tree. If we forget to call this, then we're not going to have a dialog tree. So it's not going to work whenever we try to perform dialog. So let's actually check and make sure we have a dialog tree. So if, if dialog nodes.size is equal to zero, so if there's no elements in our vector, that means we didn't construct the tree, right? Because there's no, there's no conversational nodes. So what we would do is like return negative 1. We're just going to return so we don't have any bugs or anything like that. Now, another way to say size is equal to 0 is to say dot empty. Same thing. This is going to check and see if our vector is empty. So we'll do that. Now what we need to do is do the conversation. So what we're going to do is have a pointer. So we'll call it, uh, we'll have this red pointer, right? So the current uh, conversational thing is going to be represented by a red pointer, actually a pink pointer, like that. So we're going to start here at Hello Brave Warrior. Then if we pick Sup Noob, we're going to take this pointer and we're going to change it to point to this one. So now we're at this conversational thing. And then we just keep going through this while loop. So if we followed Hello Strange Voice, we would point to this. Then we would point to one of these two. And then we would return, you know, really, really simple. So we're going to store that pointer. We're going to say dialog node star. This is a pointer to one of our uh, dialog nodes. We'll call it current node. And let's go ahead and initialize it to the root node. 
which is going to be the very first node we add to the tree. Hopefully, make sure you did add that one first, because you may have added them in a different order than I did. As long as the first node is added right, that's all you care about. So make sure you add this one first. The other ones, the order doesn't really matter. So current node equals dialog nodes zero, like that. So that's going to set our current pointer to uh, the, this pointer right here, or the uh, memory address of this uh, node. And then we can use it to do our conversation. So let's do a while loop. So while, I'm going to make this an infinite loop. So while true is never going to end, because remember, whenever the thing in here is, is, is a Boolean value of true, it's not going to end ever. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to break out of the while loop with a break statement once the pointer that they select is equal to null. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it this way. So the first thing we want to do is we want to see out current node uh, arrow text. Remember, that's the same as star current node dot end l. And let's actually do two end lines. So I'm going to do slash in slash in. All right, so that's going to start the conversation out. And now what we need to do is print out all of our dialog options. So let's do a for loop. For int i equals zero, i is less than current node arrow dialog options dot size. So we're going to loop through all of the dialog options in the current node. And see, since this is a public variable, it makes it much easier. Now, that's not to say that you should make things public variables because it's easier. The only reason we're doing it here is because these are teensy tiny classes that mostly just contain data. They don't even have their own methods other than a constructor. When you have that, typically it's okay to make it a public class because you can basically just think of this as a more complicated variable. Okay, so we're going to loop through this, I++. And we're going to, let's go ahead and see out, let's see out i plus 1, so we're going to number them, and then a uh, colon like that, and then we'll say current node arrow dialog options i dot text. So we're going to see out the text, and then an indel. So we're going to see out all of those, and let's do an extra inline after that, so see out indel, and then let's get input from the user. So what the user is going to do is type in uh, uh, the, the speech choice that he wants to use. So we're not going to do error checking here. You should probably do error checking, but I'm just trying to get this done kind of quickly. So int input, and we're going to say cn input, like that. So next thing we're going to do is use that input uh, to pick the next dialog node. So, for instance, if he types in a 1, we want to follow supnoob to the next node. If he types in a 2, we want to follow hello strange voice to the next node. So, what we're going to do is use uh, the dialog options, uh, or sorry, the current node's dialog options uh, option that we selected, and we're going to use its pointer to go to the next one. So we also need to definitely check and see if it's equal to null. So let's go ahead and do that first. Let's say if current node arrow dialog options, and it's going to be input minus 1, because if he types in a 1, we want to get the first element, which is the index 0. If that dot uh, next node is equal to the null pointer, that means we're done. Like that. That means we're done. Now, since we're going to be using this value again, let's go ahead and just do it right here. Let's just say input minus minus. That will subtract 1. So then we don't need the minus 1 here. And remember, we're assuming he types it in right. If he doesn't, we're going to get an error. So let's go ahead and check that at least. If, if input is less than uh, 0 or input is greater than current node arrow dialog options dot size, that's going to error check so we don't get an error. We're going to say see out invalid input slash in. There we go. Else, if he typed it in right, if he typed in a valid one, then we'll do the rest of this stuff. So this will keep us from getting a crash if they type in something wrong. All right, so if that's equal to null pointer, that means we're done with the conversation. So we're just going to return, and we're going to return the current node or the current options 
a return code like this. So if we were to return at any of these black ones, we would be returning zero. But if we return here at let's do it, remember we passed in a one to the constructor for this dialog option. So that's going to return one since this return code is one. And then we can process that in our main function. We can like see out uh, you got the quest or whatever. So check for end of conversation. Here we go. And now if we get to this point, that means the conversation isn't over. So we're going to say current node equals, and it's going to be equal to this, which is the next node. So current node equals the current dialog options, uh, the one he selected, its next node. So if we type in a zero, which is sup noob, then it's going to be the current node, which is Hello Brave Warrior, it's going to be the current node's first dialog option, which is, of course, sup noob, and it's going to be the next node pointer, which is pointing to this right here. So we're setting our pink pointer to be pointing at the same value that this blue pointer is pointing at. So our pink pointer started here. Once we set it equal to the blue pointer, what that does is it makes it point right there, just like that. And that's what we want. And that's pretty much it. And now it's going to continue. So let's go ahead and do a C out indel to make it look pretty. And that is that. It should be done. Let's actually put it down here uh, outside the if else so that it C outs a new line uh, for both of them. Okay, so that's that. Now we can actually uh, do it. So let's go ahead and go to main and call, uh, let's, let's get the return value. So int uh, rv for return value equals dialog tree dot uh, perform dialog. Because remember, perform dialog is going to return dialog, dialog, <laughs> can't type that word. So it's going to return a value. And it's going to return the value right here. Now your compiler may complain at you saying not all control paths return a value. I don't think it will because this is a, a uh, endless loop. It's never going to end. Uh, but you can go ahead and just re do a return zero down here or something if you want. But this actually never can be reached. That's just if your compiler is complaining at you for some reason. All right. So this is going to get the result of the dialog. And we're just going to say if rv is equal to 1, we're going to see out. And I'll do like you accepted the quest. Yay. Like that. And we should be done. So let's see if we have errors. Uh, one last thing. Remember, we called new a bunch of times. Forgot that. We called new a bunch of times in init. So we need to call delete for every single uh, time we called new. So let's go ahead and call dialog tree dot destroy tree. And we're going to make it so that this function. Let's go ahead and go to it. Go to dialog tree and where is it? Here's destroy tree. Let's make it so this function calls delete on all of these nodes that we allocated. So remember, we pushed them back to dialog nodes. That's why we pushed them all back. So all we got to do is loop through that and delete them all. So for int i equals zero, i is less than dialog nodes dot size, i plus plus. So each one we just call delete. Really simple. So delete dialog nodes i. And then to make sure we don't try to access them again later, after we do this, we can call dialog nodes.clear. And what that does is it gets rid of everything in the vector and makes its size equal to zero. Now, if you forget to call delete and then you call dialog nodes.clear, remember what that's going to do is get rid of the pointers. It's going, to re it's going to release the memory for the pointers, but it's not going to release the stack memory for the actual, or the heap memory, sorry, for the actual dialog nodes we allocated here. So we have to do that explicitly with the delete call like this. So that's that. That will destroy the tree. And now we don't have a memory leak. Super awesome. So let's go ahead and run it and see if it works. And I believe it will, but I often make mistakes in these videos. And it's building rather slowly for such a small program. All right. So look, it's already starting out working. Let me get my little zoom tool up. All right. So it says, hello, brave warrior. Let's go ahead and say sup noob. And he says, I don't want to talk to you. So we can pick a speech option. I'm going to pick three, which doesn't exist. And it says invalid input. All right, so we're going to just say all, because that's the only option. And then it says enter any key to continue, because that ended the conversation. Awesome. So let's run it again. And let's try to accept the quest. I'm going to say hello, strange voice. He says, I have a quest for you. I'm going to say, what's the pay? He says, you will get five gold, you greedy swine. Okay, what's it? It's collect 10 dandelions. 
let's do it. And it says, you accepted the quest, yay. So there is our uh, fairly crappy little dialogue tree. You could use something really similar, uh, but try to think of a way to load your dialogue options from a file. And actually, if you want to really make a dialogue tree in your games, you should do a little research. Just Google a, like C++ uh, dialogue tree or game development dialogue tree or something like that, and you might find some really interesting uh, sources on stuff like this so that you can make a really good system. But if you're just making a tiny little game, it's okay to program it not the perfect way. You guys are still learning. All of my first programs had some really, really terrible code, but they still helped me learn how things work. And it's okay if you program it wrong the first time because you will learn from that and you will learn why it's wrong. And it's always a good idea to uh, show your code uh, to an experienced programmer. Uh, there's probably lots of people in the comments, so make sure you paste any programs you make uh, on your own there. And people can criticize it or, or give you tips and things like that help you find bugs. Uh, the community so far has been really, really helpful, and I, of course, have been trying to answer all of your questions and things. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned for the next episode.